Welcome. On the 26th of February, the Mozilla Foundation of Firefox introduced a new terms of use and a updated privacy notice for Firefox. And this says in the end, yeah, we could do almost everything with your data now. They had described it very broad and this issued a big wave of Firefox users, which is not optimal for the whole Mozilla Foundation and also if we have a look to the chromium based browsers dominance then this isn't very good for firefox based browsers and especially for mozilla and firefox which should be the answer against privacy phishing browsers like for example microsoft edge or google chrome and mozilla is playing these cards very very often and they introduced a lot of things in the last years which were not good for our privacy at all at Firefox and um, now we are at a point where uh, someone could say okay yeah Mozilla that's enough I'm switching to another browser because obviously I can't trust you anymore and this is it which many users are currently doing also I by myself would not choose Firefox as a default browser anymore yeah I'm using right now Firefox because it's pretty installed on Linux Mint, uh, but um, I wouldn't use it as a daily browser anymore. What are the alternatives also regarding privacy? Which is the best browser regarding privacy? If you want to switch from Firefox to another browser, um, we have a Brave browser here, we have a Chromium browser, we have UnGoogle Chromium, uh, we have Waterfox and LibreWolf. So I would say let's just go through all these browsers. The first one I want to mention also the most known browser uh, maybe beside um, Chromium is Brave. Brave is based on uh, the Chromium basis which is also based on Google Chrome or Google Chrome is based on Chromium better to say and also Brave is based on Chromium. So we have the Chromium base but Brave implemented a lot of privacy features uh, like a built-in ad blocker, built-in tracker blocker. Also, it has a Tor integration for anonymous browsing. But Brave comes also by default with their Brave Ads system, which is also based on a cryptocurrency called the Basic Attention Token, I guess. And um, this has the only downside of Brave, but you can turn this off in the settings very easily. And um, other than that, you have a very good privacy-based browser. Um, also with some, yeah, kind of shady features in my eyes. For example, a built-in AI assistant. I won't need this in my browser. Browser, um, or built in in my browser, better to say, and also a powerful VPN um, on our device via Brave. This is also kind of cool, but I'm not really a fan of such um, enhanced browsers. They should focus on their main functionality and this is yeah displaying me all websites and um, yeah of course maybe also block me from some ad trackers and something like this. But Brave is quite good and um, because of this a um, really good recommendation um, if you want to switch to another browser which is um, kind of privacy focused but also displays a kind of ethical ads. This is it for Brave browser. Let's head over to Chromium browser. And as I mentioned before, uh, Chromium is yeah, the open source base of Google Chrome and of many, many more browsers like, for example, Opera, Vivaldi, all these browsers, Microsoft Edge, of course, also um, are based on Chromium. And on Chromium, yeah, we have the base. Chromium is a really great base for a web browser, but it isn't anything more than that. And also it has some Google functionality, like for example, you could log in into your Google account and also has maybe, and also has some other features built in, uh, which could um, send something to Google, not will, but it could send something to Google. But beside that, it's a really good open source browser, which isn't as telemetry based as for example, also Firefox nowadays, or for example, Google 
Chrome. But Chromium is kind of naked, so it doesn't protect you itself. So you have to install some add-ons, which could be quite important if you want to block some things like, for example, ads or trackers. But beside that, Chromium is a very good base and a very good browser indeed. Also one of my favorites in the Linux world too. This is a quite of good alternative uh, to Firefox, but again, by default, it doesn't protect you from any trackers or something else. So you have to install there something. Then we have also ungoogled Chromium. Yeah, this is Chromium just without any Google web service technology inside or dependency, better to say. It's basically Google Chrome or the open source Google Chrome, but without complete Google. So this is, I would say, the best basic browser you could get. But yeah, this is the official website of uh, Google Chromium. Um, you get Google Chromium via the FlatHub, for example, but uh, to install it on your system yourself, we haven't too much releases built in there. But they have a download page where we have some installers for Windows, Mac OS, Portable Linux, but also Debian uh, packages. So we can also get a, a Deb package here, but this is the version 100. And if we have a look in here, we have the version 134. So this isn't up to date at the current point. So here the app image is, I would say, the best version to pick if you want to use on Google Chromium. And um, this is one of the browsers I'm uh, thinking about using it um, as a new daily browser, to be honest, because yeah, I only want a browser and the rest I want to do by myself. And this could be great for yeah such users. Also, we have some alternatives or direct alternatives to Firefox, which are based on Firefox. The first is Waterfox. The second is LibreWolf. Both browsers have kind of same aim. They want it to be a fast, very private web browser. Waterfox and LibreWolf don't have any telemetry data. This is very, very good. Um, just like, for example, Google Chromium on the Firefox side. LibreWolf has also some very cool privacy features right away. Also, Waterfox has many privacy features. Uh, you could also very highly customize. This is great, but both browsers have yeah, kind of a downside. Uh, for example, also Waterfox doesn't have a really good Linux integration. If we click on download, yeah, we get a tar.bc2 file. So yeah, it doesn't have a really good Linux integration right now. This is kind of a downside. And um, if we come to LibreWolf, especially, it had some critics in the past not delivering very important security updates, uh, which were also very urgent in time to LibreWolf users. So it could be kind of outdated at some things. And also if it comes regarding security um, on the browser, they might be a bit later than, for example, a Firefox browser. And this is in my eyes a kind of a bad sign why I won't recommend LibreWolf, for example. And also Waterfox has the similar tendency to that and um, especially also with the Linux integration. So this is why I can't really recommend these both browsers for everyone, but there might be a user group, for example, for, for Waterfox. The more advanced users in Linux could be very happy with Waterfox. Fox, also LibreWolf had these security issues in the past. So this is why I wouldn't recommend it for this video now. But I don't want to say that LibreWolf um, is a complete bad browser or something else. This is it to all open source browsers, which are kind of established. And there are also some other browsers which are really popular or really trendy to say right now, like for example, the Zen browser. But I want to give these browsers a bit of time because I don't know if these browsers will also exist in one or two years. And at these browsers, I'm very sure that they will exist um, some more years. And also they have a very established user base. This could be a thing at the point of time. So what to choose in the end? As you see, we don't have the perfect browser. But I would say for the best package also by default in terms of privacy, Brave does a really good job and also has a 
kind of good Linux integration. This is okay. This is a good browser to use, I would say. Also, Angul Chromium is great if you just want a basic browser, but again, you don't have too many privacy features by default, so you have to um, put some add-ons there. And if it comes to the Firefox alternative, um, then I would really recommend um, Waterfox, but only for the um, advanced users. And this is it for this video. Would I recommend Mozilla for using as a default browser? To be honest, not completely. I'm not standing behind Firefox uh, anymore. This is kind of sad, but this is uh, what Mozilla did in the last years. In my opinion, they messed it really up uh, because um, they have such an important role, Firefox-based browsers, because the Chromium base is so dominant in all the web and we don't want any monopolies. So Firefox browsers should be very important in the future or should be really strong in the future. And this is what Mozilla in terms of privacy doesn't do in the last years. And also there isn't a great alternative um, at the time, um, which I could really recommend um, using um, at the time. Um, yeah, I'm very looking forward to Send Browser, but yeah, I want to give it a bit more time to really recommend and to see what the project is about and how many users in the end are really using and contributing to this project. So this is at a kind of early stage at this point here. What do you think about all the web browsers? Please let me know it in the comments. And also please write me in the comments, what browser are you using and which browser would you recommend regarding privacy? I am very curious about this. Let us discuss a bit in the comment section. Beside that, see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, please leave a like and subscribe to this YouTube channel. See you in the next one. Bye.